Science, science, science in pajamas. Dun, 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 dun. Hi, I'm back. All right, so today we're going to talk about how energy flows through an ecosystem. Now, first of all, remember what we were talking about in terms of photosynthesis and cell respiration and then autotrophs versus heterotrophs. Heterotrophs get glucose from what they eat. All right, so if a lion gets it from its food, a gazelle, where'd the gazelle get it from? Well, the gazelle also got it from its food, which was the grass. Where'd the grass get it from? Well, the grass is a producer, it's an autotroph. So the autotroph gets it via either chemosynthesis or more typically, photosynthesis. And that's what we're gonna start talking about here. Now, the thing about energy is it only flows in one direction through the ecosystem. Now, we can draw this as either a food chain or a food web. We're gonna be talking about both of them. But the energy always starts with either the sun, if it's photosynthesis, or a chemical compound, if it's chemosynthesis. We're gonna be focusing on photosynthesis. And the sun, the sun, in this case, provides energy to the autotrophs, the producers, like plants. That allows the plants to make glucose. It powers their own cells. And then an herbivore, a heterotroph that only eats plants, can get the glucose from the grass because the, glu the grass made its own glucose. And then a carnivore, like a mountain lion can get at the glucose it needs from eating whatever the herbivore is because it got the herbivore has glucose because it got it from the grass well how'd the grass get it photosynthesis all right so um, each step of a food chain or a food web is considered a trophic level and the producer, the plant in this case, is always going to be the first step, the first trophic level. And then after that, you just, you know, the herbivore would be the second trophic level, the carnivore would be the third, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to start taking a look at this. We're going to do some examples of food chains and food webs. And we're going to be looking at the trophic levels as well. Now the thing though, thing that is important to remember is we get energy from food, which means that whichever trophic level you are on, your energy source is dependent on the trophic level beneath you, which will make sense as we talk about it. All right, so let's keep going, shall we? Let's start with the food chain. A food chain is just a single pathway that the energy takes in an ecosystem. So for instance, this is a food chain. The sun allows the grass to do photosynthesis. The grass gets eaten by the deer. That means that the glucose is being passed on to the deer. The deer is getting glucose from the grass. It is getting energy from the grass. So you can think of the arrow as showing the flow of energy. It goes from the grass to the deer. The deer gains energy when it eats the grass. And then the wolf eats the deer. So the wolf gets energy by eating the deer. So notice how it's just simply one pathway from the grass to the deer to the wolf. That's what we mean by a food chain. So this is a food chain. Now in terms of trophic level, the producer is always the first trophic level. Whatever eats, in this case, the grass, whatever eats the grass is the second trophic level. We can also think of it as a primary consumer because it's the first consumer. So second trophic level, trophic level, this is a producer. This is a primary consumer. So the grass is the first trophic level. 
the deer is the second trophic level because it's directly after the grass, that means the wolf is the third trophic level because it's directly after the second one. Now in terms of names, like how we classify the consumers, remember we said the first trophic level is always the producers, the photosynthetic organism. The primary consumer means the first consumer. So it's the first thing that is eating. Well, what's the first thing that's eating? Our herbivore. Our herbivore is a primary consumer because it's gonna eat the producer. The wolf would then be a secondary consumer because it's the second thing that's doing the eating. It eats the deer, which ate the grass. All right. So that's a food chain. Now let's bump it up a little bit. Let's make it a little more complex because in nature, in real ecosystems, you're not just going to see one chain like that. You're going to actually see food webs. And what food webs are, they're all the possible ways energy can move through an ecosystem. So in other words, it's interconnected um, food chains. So here we have the sun. This is an example of a food web. And you're going to see how it interconnects. So here we have the sun. Now we have two producers. We have the grass slash seeds. We have producers. And we have the plankton. Plankton is a single celled photosynthetic organism. Now Let's start with the grass and seeds. All right, well, what can eat the grass and seeds? Well, the grasshopper can eat the grass and seeds. So energy will go from the grass to the grasshopper. What else can eat the grass and seeds? Well, the mouse can. We're gonna draw a line there as well. And this is starting to act tight. Okay, we're Grasshopper can eat the grass. The mouse can eat the grass. You might even see the raccoon eating some of the seeds. All right. What can eat the grasshopper? Well, actually, a mouse can eat a grasshopper. Um, the raccoon may or may not. And even the, yeah, sorry, even the raccoon can eat a grasshopper. All right. Well, what can eat a mouse? Oh, glad you asked. The owl can eat the mouse. All right. And the raccoon might eat a mouse on occasion as well. All right. What eats the raccoon? Well, the owl can. Nice, all right. Now let's come over here to our other producer and start down here with the plankton. Oh, what can eat the plankton? A fish can eat the plankton. And what can eat the fish? Well, the crawfish can eat the fish and the raccoon can also eat the fish. All right, and then what can eat the crawfish? The raccoon can eat the crawfish. And then the owl once again can eat the raccoon. Now notice how this looks. There's a lot going on here. So let's, I'm not gonna fill out everything on here, but we are going to talk a little bit about it. In terms of trophic level, the plankton is the first trophic level, as well as the grass. They are the first trophic level in different scenarios. So we can go from the plankton to the fish, which would then make the fish the second trophic level, to the raccoon, which would make the raccoon the third trophic level, to the owl, which would make the owl the fourth trophic level. Or we can go first plankton, second fish, 
third crawfish, fourth raccoon, and the fifth trophic level would be the owl. You come over here with the grass and the seeds. They're the first trophic level. Grasshopper would be the second. Then the mouse would be the third. Then the owl would be the fourth trophic level. Or we can go first trophic level grass, second trophic level grasshopper, third trophic level mouse, fourth trophic level raccoon, fifth trophic level owl. Okay, then we can also go first trophic level grass, second trophic level grasshopper, third trophic level raccoon, fourth trophic level owl. Or we can go first trophic level grass, second trophic level mouse, third trophic level owl. Or first trophic level grass, following this arrow, second trophic level mouse, third trophic level owl, fourth, or sorry, raccoon, fifth trophic let me try this again. <laughs> First trophic level grass, second trophic level mouse, third trophic level raccoon, fourth trophic level owl. Or, first trophic level grass, second trophic level raccoon, third trophic level owl. So notice how we ran through that and depending on which of those food chains within this food web we're looking at, that will also affect which consumer, like how we label as a primary, secondary, tertiary consumer. So these, this is always a producer. If we follow this way, producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, quaternary consumer, and I'm not quite sure what the fifth level consumer would be. Uh, so producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. All right, that's right. I miscounted before. So it'd be primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and quaternary, the fourth. I forgot about fourth. Fourth level consumer. All right, let's see. So producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, uh, producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, quaternary consumer, and producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. All right, so I know that's kind of a lot, but I at least wanted to kind of let you see how those work and how the different relationships um, work together. Now remember, we said that the en all the energy for one level is dependent on the level, level beneath it. For instance, the owl, it gets its or, you know, let's do one that only has one arrow. The crawfish. It gets all of its energy from the fish because it's trophic level below it. We have the first trophic level, second trophic level, third trophic level. The crawfish gets all of its energy from this, which makes sense. What other food sources does it have? None. It only eats the fish. So that means just like how we get energy from the food we eat, it's the same thing here. The, all of the energy that the crawfish get come from the fish. So that's what we mean by the energy of one trophic level is dependent on the one beneath it. All right, so next time we'll probably talk about energy pyramids, but until that time, you guys, just enjoy yourselves. Stay awesome, and I'll talk to you next time. All right, you guys, bye-bye.